What's the difference between sorry for the consequences of your actions as opposed to being sorry for having done the wrong? We're continuing our look at the ancient book of Deuteronomy to obtain guidelines to help us in our daily living. In this series of lessons, we are searching for that light that gives us life and gives us the power we need on our spiritual journey to turn our affections to the one who truly loves us. Heavenly Father, we humbly submit ourselves to you. We ask that you forgive us for the wrong things we have said and done. Cleanse our minds and make us complete. Change the object of our love and give us the heart to do your will rather than our will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In line with a changed heart, our key text is Deuteronomy 4, verse 29, which says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. The title of this lesson is, With All Your Heart. The source of every desire to do the right thing is Christ. The only one who can put within our hearts a hatred for evil is Christ Jesus. If you have even the smallest desire for doing the right thing and thinking clean thoughts, those desires come from Christ working in your heart. For every conviction of our own sinfulness is evidence that the Holy Spirit is working in our hearts. His desire for us is to turn away from sin and turn back to him with all our hearts. And this comes from Steps to Christ, page 26, Adapted. Deuteronomy 30, one through 10 shows the mercy and goodness of God for us, even after we have turned away from him and all his blessings. As expressed in Deuteronomy 4, verse 7, God gave the Hebrew nation blessings he gave to no one else. But Deuteronomy 4, 7 says, For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. God did so much for them. There was no excuse for their wrong actions, but they sinned anyhow. But like a loving parent, even after they had sinned, God was willing to, willing to forgive them and take them back. However, there is something the Hebrews needed to do for God to take them back. What was it? The answer is found in Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10. Now see if you can determine what it is. Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10 says, Now it shall come to pass, when all these things come up on you, the blessings and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul, that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest part under heaven, from there, the Lord your God will gather you, and from there, he will bring you, bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God 
with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Also, the Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you, who persecute you. And you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord your God, Lord will again rejoice over you for good and he re as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, if you said they needed to return to the Lord with all their heart, obey his voice and keep his commandments, you are correct. If God expected them to do it, then what do we need to do now to come back to him? Ultimately, Israel had to make the choice to return to God and to obey him with all their hearts. The real issue is our hearts. Because if our heart is right with God, then our actions will follow. That is, we would obey him from a sincere heart. God said he will work a miracle in their hearts. He promised to circumcise their hearts, but God would only perform the miracle if they sincerely chose to return to him. In other words, it was their choice. When our hearts are right with God, then we will obey him. But first, we must come back to him. Once the Hebrews desired to come back, then God said he will bring them back to himself and give them back their land. God also promised he will bless Israel in the land. How will he do that? God will change their hearts even more toward him so that their hearts and the hearts of even their children would be filled with love for God. It says in Deuteronomy 30 verse 10, if you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. In Acts 5, 31, Paul tells us that God makes it possible for the Jews to be sorry for their sins. Then they can turn from them and be forgiven. God makes turning from sin possible, but in the end, to be his people, we must choose to come back to him. Patriots and prophets help us to better understand this idea about turning away from sin and returning back to God. It says, the people mourned because their sins had brought suffering upon themselves, but not because they dishonored God by transgression of his holy law. True repentance is more than sorrow for sin. It is a resolute a decision to turn away from the evil. Or you can feel sorry because you sin. But know that there is a difference. One comes from a heart that is being changed by God. The heart is sorry for the sin. On the other hand, the other experiences no change. There's no regret for the suffering sin caused. But we can experience a true change of heart and be sorry for the actual sins. How? Find out in part six, repent and be converted.